overwhelming and not at all pre-planned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, it's great to be here in air again. I haven't been here in a couple of weeks. I love the basement. Uh, it's really nice that so many of you have come out tonight to support this lovely event. I mean, I remember in my tenure as a local musician, it was really difficult to get people to come out to any sort of performance. I don't know what it is for you young folk, I suppose you'd rather go out and enjoy yourselves, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of <laughs> it's not going to get much better. Uh. <laughs> Uh, so this is my awkward second stand-up performance, not 24 hours after my first. Woo! Last night, uh, I went to my regular halt, halt, eh? regular haunt, the Halt Bar in Glasgow, where the compere, a gentleman called Chris Henry, uh, was trying to introduce me, but only knew me as that guy that bothers him for later every week. <laughs> Shows I'm well-liked in my own social circles, it's great. <laughs> and yes, I was formerly a musician. Uh, I don't use that as a euphemism for being unemployed, although, let's face it, it was a euphemism for being unemployed. Uh, something that bothers me right now, biscuits. Biscuit politics are a big deal for me right now, okay? Biscuits, okay. Don't worry, I've got, I've got a train of thought here, just get on. Right. Anyway, so, Twixes, right? You don't have to get a single Twix. How come, when you get a single Twix, you only ever get the left one, but never the right one? <laughs> that worked a lot better last night. Yeah. In my defence, I did steal that one from an eight-year-old. <laughs> that is true, sadly. Uh, most of my material is stolen from school children. Don't ask me how I meet school children. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, because there are actually some people in here that I don't know, which is weird. Uh, my name's Jimmy. I'm from Glasgow. I'm a, I'm a Gemini. I like uh, long walks on the beach. Uh, Italian food, the films of Woody Allen, uh, something else I like, is uh, talking to strangers at comedy shows. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's your name? My name's Sheena. Sheena. It's Queen of the Jungle. Queen of the Jungle? <laughs> yes. That's quite the title. Uh, was there a popular vote, or is it a uh, love anything? Uh, no, no. Uh, I was just called that. You were just called that? No. Okay, so you've not got any sort of hereditary no. ownership of that? No. Okay. Right, I'm going to refute that. I'm an, I'm an Aquarius. You're an Aquarius? Yes. That's, that's good, okay. Here's a question for you. Do you like Twixes? Well, <laughs> no, not really. I see the ad, the left Twix and the right Twix yes. never spoke and, and built two buildings. Yeah, that's, that's the context of the joke right there. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, I don't know where to go from here. I normally have a bit of witty repartee that I use for people in the front row, but you guys are in the front row, just like my friends, ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends is a strong word, uh, all I know. <laughs> and I have known for a long time, sadly. But uh, it's... <laughs> That's the ambience. Uh, let's come over here so I don't have to yell as much. It's okay, it's okay, I'm just being in the way, really. Uh, so, I have a reputation amongst my social circle as being a magnet for what I can only describe as fucking morons. Right? Not you guys, well, maybe you guys. Uh, but I've got the best story to display this now, and this happened to me a couple of nights ago. I'm in the pub alone, obviously. Because, oh. you know, I'm an anti-social drinker. <laughs> You'll never do that when you're my age, apparently. So, but I get to talking to this guy, this older gentleman by the bar, and he's having this really horrible time, right? See? <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> anyway, so this guy, his father-in-law just passed away, right? It's really oh. sad. But not only that, but he's got this 10-year-old kid who's never experienced death in the lights before, right? And he's got to explain why this kid's granddad's not going to be around anymore. But this is a creative gentleman. <laughs> and the plan he comes up with is, in my opinion, right? Borderline child abuse. <laughs> See, when the old man passed away, they took his mobile phone and they texted the kid 
from the mobile phone, pretending to be the dead grandma. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Wait, it gets much worse. Okay. The text reads something like this. Well, that's me off to heaven, son. I don't know why he's from Yorkshire. <laughs> That's me off to heaven, son. Be a good boy for your mum and dad, and remember that I will always love you. Which is sweet in a creepy way, you know? Much like Cal's pilling technique. What pilling technique? But it all got a little bit morbid when they signed off the message with, See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did actually write all this down in case I'm called as a witness by child services, <coughs> which, let's face it, will happen. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, this has kind of been my stand-up set, and I'm glad you all haven't thrown stuff at me, so thanks for that. I just yeah. want to leave you with this thought. If you ever feel like you're not doing anything with your life, remember the giant panda. <laughs> because they can't even have sex right, and they're always on the news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Evan Jimmy.